We're now just one month away from the 2024 presidential election, a historic race between former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris. Following the presidential and vice presidential debates, as well as several major events, we now have a clearer picture of who is currently favored to win. In this video, I'll be updating my 2024 electoral map predictions based on the latest polling averages from all 50 states. If you enjoy election content and want real-time updates on key developments, be sure to subscribe to my channel. To start, let's see who is leading the race. According to simulations from 538, Kamala Harris wins 54 out of 100 times, compared to Donald Trump's 45. While this gives Harris a slight edge, the race is close enough that we need to examine key states more closely to see how things might unfold. Before diving into state-by-state -state analysis, let's review the national polls. Currently, Harris leads by 2.5% in the national popular vote. However, as we know, the election will be decided by the Electoral College, so our focus shifts to key battleground states like Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. Let's begin by identifying the solid states for each candidate, those expected to be won by a margin of 15% or more. For Kamala Harris, the solid states are Washington, Oregon, California, Hawaii, Illinois, New York, Maine's 1st District, Vermont, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, New Jersey, Maryland, Delaware, and the District of Columbia. For Donald Trump, his solid states include Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, South Carolina, Kentucky, West Virginia, and Indiana. Trump is also expected to solidly win Nebraska's at-large district. Based on these solid states, Harris holds 181 electoral votes, while Trump stands at 122. Now, let's move on to the likely states, those where candidates are expected to win by a margin of 10% to 15%. Kamala Harris is likely to win Colorado, New Mexico, Virginia, New Hampshire, Maine's 1st District, and Minnesota. She leads comfortably in all these states, with Minnesota being Tim Walz's home state, where he has served as governor since 2019. For Donald Trump, the likely states are Alaska, Iowa, and Ohio. Factoring in both solid and likely states, Harris reaches 225 electoral votes, while Trump stands at 148. Now, let's move on to the lean states for each candidate, those expected to be won by a margin of 3% to 5%, making them more competitive. Starting with Nevada, Kamala Harris currently leads by 1% in the polls. Nevada is categorized as a lean state because Harris has been gaining momentum there. According to the latest Atlas Intel polls, which were the most accurate predictors in the 2020 election, Harris is now up by 3%. Nevada has consistently leaned Democratic, voting for the party by 2.4% margins in both 2016 and 2020. With Harris leading and her numbers improving, she is on track to win Nevada's six electoral votes. Next, in Michigan, Harris holds a 1.9% lead in the polling averages. Compared to Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, Michigan is more liberal, having gone to Biden by 2.8% in 2020. Demographically, Harris is performing well, particularly among white voters, where she is showing more strength than Biden did in 2020. Some recent polls even show her leading by as much as 6%, which is a notable margin in this key swing state. For now, I'm placing Michigan in Harris's column with a lean margin. As for Donald Trump, his lean states include Texas and Florida, both of which he won in 2016 and 2020. Trump expanded his margin in Florida to 3.4% in 2020, while Texas has been gradually shifting to the left due to its growing population. However, Texas hasn't yet reached a point where Democrats can realistically expect to win its 40 electoral votes. With the lean states factored in, Kamala Harris stands at 247 electoral votes, while Donald Trump has 218. Now, let's move on to the final states that will ultimately decide the election. With the 2024 election fast approaching, let's take a closer look at Arizona. Recently, former Republican Senator Jeff Flake of Arizona endorsed Kamala Harris for president, a major boost to her campaign and a setback for Donald Trump. Flake isn't the only Republican backing Harris, 200 others, including former Vice President Dick Cheney, have also endorsed her. Additionally, an abortion referendum in Arizona is expected to energize Democratic voters. 
With these factors in play, I'm giving Arizona to Kamala Harris, though by a very narrow margin. Turning to Georgia, Donald Trump currently leads by 1.2% in the polls. In 2020, Joe Biden made history by flipping Georgia with a 0.2% margin. Although Harris isn't as popular in the state as Biden was, Trump's popularity has also waned since then. During the vice presidential debate, Tim Walz asked J.D. Vance if Trump lost the 2020 election, and Vance's inability to give a clear answer prompted Walls to call it a damning non-answer. Despite this, Georgia leans slightly toward Trump, so I'm giving the state to Donald Trump, but by a slim margin. In North Carolina, Republican gubernatorial candidate Mark Robinson has been hit with multiple scandals involving extreme comments he made online. Since these revelations, his campaign has taken a steep downturn, and he is now almost certain to lose the race. What's more significant is that these controversies are also impacting Donald Trump, who has been closely aligned with Robinson. Trump has praised Robinson, even going so far as to compare him to Martin Luther King Jr., calling him a better version of King. This association is now backfiring, with North Carolina voters starting to turn against Trump due to Robinson's scandals. Given these developments, I'm awarding North Carolina to Kamala Harris by a narrow margin. With this, Harris surpasses the 270 electoral votes required to win the presidency. Now, let's move to the final three states, starting with Wisconsin. I'm giving Wisconsin to Kamala Harris, though by the slimmest of margins. Polling averages show her ahead by 1.6%, with some recent polls putting her lead as high as 3%. Demographically, Harris is doing well, particularly among white voters who make up the majority in the Rust Belt. While Biden was more popular in 2020 than Harris is now, she is outperforming him among white voters, which gives her an edge in this region. Given the state's demographic makeup, I'm awarding Wisconsin to Harris by a very slim margin. Next, let's turn to Pennsylvania, one of the most critical battleground states in the 2024 election. Polling averages show Harris with a narrow 0.6% lead, making Pennsylvania a virtual toss-up. During the recent vice presidential debate, Tim Walls asked J.D. Vance whether Donald Trump lost the 2020 election, and Vance's refusal to answer clearly became one of the debate's most talked about moments. In 2020, Biden won Pennsylvania by 1.2%, and I don't see a significant enough shift toward Trump to flip the state. Given Harris's slight polling advantage, I'm giving Pennsylvania to her by a very slim margin. Finally, the state of Maine will go to Donald Trump, bringing the final electoral count to 303 votes for Kamala Harris and 235 votes for Donald Trump. Thank you for watching.